Uh, T-Mobile shares falling after an earnings miss and lower than expected postpaid net ads with joining us now ahead of the earnings call. T-Mobile CEO and President Mike Sievert. Mike, it's great to have you on. Thanks for being with us. I am going to start right there with the 1.57 million uh, in wireless postpaid net ads. So much stronger than the rest of the industry, but in a week where we saw AT&T and Verizon add more subscribers than expected, this number falling a bit short of street expectations. Walk us through it. Well, you're right. It's definitely the best in the industry. And where investors really focus their attention is postpaid phone net additions, where we beat handily the expectations as well as our guidance numbers. And so it's really nice to see that the core business is operating exactly as investors inspect. And I think when they double click on those postpaid overall additions tomorrow, they'll see exactly what's happening, which is some disconnect of some lower value COVID related school district uh, net additions, which aren't going to affect materially any results in 24. So overall on customers, this is a big beat because postpaid phones are where everybody focuses. Okay. Uh, and service revenue basically in line, adjusted free cash flow looks like slightly higher than expectations and certainly continues to represent a very strong growth rate for you. I'm going to ask you a question I think you get probably from myself and my colleagues every quarter, but I'm going to ask it again. And that is, how are you thinking about pricing, especially at a time where one of your competitors, Verizon, just recently announced uh, a price increase that's going to affect 30 million of their subscribers. How are you thinking about it? Is there room for you to start uh, raising your own? Well, we're the value leader in this industry, Morgan, and we have no um, expectation that that will ever change. We intend to defend that position. That being said, what you saw this quarter is that average revenue per account rose nearly 2 percent while we delivered uh, better than expected postpaid phone net additions. And so that's a great formula. Customers are self-selecting up our rate card and they're buying our very best plans. And so revenue per customer is rising and without the shenanigans. You know, that being said, I'll tell you one thing. Customers are getting more across this entire industry, not just T-Mobile, than ever before from this category. I mean, with relatively consistent prices, they're using three times more data than five years ago and experiencing four times better speeds as an industry. So values are better than they've ever been. And if we look for places where we can optimize our operations, you know, through the year, you know, we'll find those opportunities. And we, we took some of those opportunities in Q4. Yeah, you, you mentioned operations. That's what I'm going to ask you about job cuts. You did some in August, talked about those last quarter on the call. We were seeing some other companies just talking about Levi and, and them going through uh, a bit of a reorganization, trying to get their costs in line in this environment where the top line growth, perhaps not, not as strong as some would hope. How do you feel about where you are operationally now, where you are on headcount now uh, versus the, the kind of cash flow that you expect to see from T-Mobile by year end. Thanks, John. You know, it's nice that we were able to beat on top line, beat on service revenues, and cash flow is the real story here with nearly 80 percent year over year growth and a strong guide next year with cash flow at the midpoint up 22 percent, about five times the rate of our next nearest competitor. And to the premise of your question, that's really about making sure that our operation, now that it's fully scaled, we're the best version of ourselves. We've got our folks focused in the right departments and the right numbers. And as you saw in this quarter, we took some technology depreciation acceleration because we're living in an unprecedented time and T-Mobile is not gonna miss the moment on making sure we have the most modern technology capabilities. And all those things you see reflected in a really confident 2024 guide. Um, I'm going to ask you about iPhone 15 and, and Apple in general and what you saw in the quarter, the key holiday quarter, in terms of customers trading up to new devices. Well, it is an intensely competitive market, and it has been for a long time. And you saw that we were able to navigate that and deliver a big win in postpaid net additions. And we were able to do that with upgrade rates that were a little lower than our competitors. And what that means is we're very surgical and guided by the customer. Customers are getting those upgrades from T-Mobile. But, you know, our, we have no interest in slamming people with upgrades until they're ready for them. And, you know, just to be, get them locked down into payment plans. And you see that reflected in our numbers. It's exactly what you want. Upgrades in line and reasonable, a little better than our competitors in terms of being lower. But postpaid net additions, net of churn, best in the industry, about twice the run rate of either of our principal competitors. Quickly, I got to ask you about SpaceX. You have this partnership that you announced back in 2022, the first satellites that you're going to be using via Starlink uh, for supplemental T-Mobile connectivity uh, were launched just a couple of weeks ago and just earlier this month the first text sent 
via those Starlinks on the T-Mobile network. Talk to me about that partnership and what it's going to enable. Well, we're really excited about it. To your point, we were able to make the first T-Mobile to T-Mobile text messaging via direct to satellite uh, the week before last. A huge moment for our industry. And we're really excited about what's possible. You know, this year is going to be a year about getting those density of satellites in the air. Uh, as well as getting ready for a customer beta that I expect we'll be able to start before the year's out.